What's up, Brad? Hey, how you doing? How you doing? Good, man. That's good. So, you know, I wanted to talk to you today. You know, this is kind of GC's interviews. Uh, it's a series that where I kind of gather knowledge on, you know, certain creatives, you know, imagineers, if you will, um, artists and stuff like that, just to kind of get a, a peek into like their, their creative process, their inspiration, like kind of how they conceptualize and identify their thoughts. And, you know, I wanted you to kind of go in depth with that, you know. First question is, what kind of problems do you kind of face? Like when you're when you're trying to come up with like a new concept, a new color scheme, like what kind of problems do you face or, or what do you kind of run into? I would say the biggest problem that I face uh, when trying to conceptualize the art is, um, you know, something, overthinking it. I think when my art specifically is very like free form and creative expressive art and um, I think that can kind of prevent me from being more authentic and having a piece that turns out just super good. With my art specifically, I only get like one shot. So um, <laughs> if it turns out bad and I swipe the paint a certain way and do it again, it'll like turn into like a black mess and the colors won't blend together well. So that can be hard as well because if it doesn't look good, it doesn't look good at all. What are some of like your favorite pieces, you know? That I've created? Yeah. I really like um, the first one that I made. You know, it started with just a blue streak of paint with black and gold. And it kind of looked like some people thought it was a dancing person. Some people thought it looked like AK-47. <laughs> some people thought it looked like Chinese calligraphy. And off of that piece, I built the four elements, earth, water, wind, and fire. Oh, wow. um, I still have that one hanging up at one of my friend's houses. and. You know, that original one, I just think it's totally unique because that's like where it started. It's like beautiful, just the perfect one. What like inspires like those those kinds of pieces? I I would say the artist that may, maybe inspires me the most is Jackson Pollock um, as an abstract expressionist. I really like when I looked into his art and read why he did it and how he did it, the techniques and how he did it on the floor so he can move around all corners. That's kind of how I do mine actually. I put it on the table or flat surface. I don't do it on a canvas. So it's always flat and I'm able to move around the canvas and kind of make that abstract type style. Oh, so um, it's like not like on the wall or anything or like on a stand, it's like- you Yeah, it's it down. always flat. So- Oh, that's really cool. That, that really inspired me, um, just how he used different types of paints and stuff, um, tools to spread the paint and look differently. I actually used a credit card for my first painting to make the paint. And um, on the last six paintings, I used business cards. So <laughs> I don't even use a paintbrush typically. Do you think you could break down like when you first get inspired or you have like that aha moment, like that epiphany, like I got to create this from that moment all the way to like a finished piece? Yeah, I would say that recently, um, you know, I'm, I'm currently thinking of a project that I'm going to do. And I think just looking around at life and the earth or different shapes, you know, nature, things that might inspire that. So I start kind of with like the shape of what I'm going to do from that process. I'll select what size of canvas, depending on the shape. If it's more circular, I'll choose a circular canvas. If it's longer, I'll choose a longer canvas. Then after that, I'll kind of play around with different color schemes. I'll get like a piece of paper and put the paints on them, use the card to kind of form and move the paints so that I can see how it would look on a canvas. And then once I do that, I kind of just wait for a time where I'm I'm really feeling present and inspired. I do, I do like accounting work during the day. It's very like tedious, different side of the brain, right? So oftentimes I think after that, like after a long day of that, I'll put on some good music, relax, and kind of just get in the mode and completely shift gears to that creative process and just kind of let go. I usually always have some kind of music on and just start feeling it. And then, like I said, you know, um, start to create the piece. What I've started to do recently, and so it's not just paint on the canvas and swishing it around. I have started to kind of draw some shapes on paper to get ideas of how I can lay it out. And I've been able to make some really cool stuff by thinking a little bit ahead of time on how I want the shapes to be. And then, of course, it helps with messing it up, like I mentioned, when you just <laughs> go those, for all it. All those mistakes, yeah, sometimes yeah. create something. I do, I do kind of just get in the zone and feel mindful. I get this 
euphoric feeling that's just like, um, yeah, just like I said, I can explain it as like just being totally present with myself, with the art and kind of letting my emotions and, and feelings be out there on the canvas. I feel like how I'm feeling at the moment might affect the painting. You know, I might use bright colors and make super clean strokes or it might be a lot of paint sloshed around and darker colors. So that oftentimes the paintings I do reflect, you know, the mood I'm in as well. Okay, that's awesome. And like I said, I don't try to limit it. You know, I'm not trying to make something happy or positive to uplift people. I'm just trying to show people that like, whatever it is you want to express, like don't hold back, let go, just do it. And you know, what you come out might be perceived as beautiful to some people. It might be perceived as so-so to some people, but um, yeah, I just wouldn't want to be um, pure and authentic with what I do. What kind of advice would you give like other artists, like as far as like expressing themselves in like a new way? I would say, don't be afraid, you know? Don't be afraid to fail or, you know, mess something up. Like I said, it's kind of, it's hard for me to do a certain painting because it might turn out bad if I take one too many strokes. So I definitely have that fear of messing up too, but um, I haven't let it stop me or prevent me. So just go all in and get out of your comfort zone because, you know, that's when the most growth happens. Um, you might have a talent or something, a gift to bring to the world that you didn't know um, because you haven't practiced it, right? So if you're trying to express yourself more or create or make art or music, just go for it and don't be afraid. Um, don't worry about the outcome or what other people will think about it or even what you'll think about it. Just, just kind of go for it. Yeah, if you want to create something, just create it. Yeah. But yeah, Brad, like you do so much, man. Like that's just what I've noticed in you. Like you're with this community, you do finance, you do art, you do art shows, you teach people art, you know, Plus, you even have your own brand, you know. Um, do you think that you can kind of give us like kind of like a brand story or a narrative on like your brand? I think it's called Yet. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I started Yet with a friend of mine, Peter, who came into my life at a pretty rough time. Um, he was a very positive person, a role model who tried to inspire me to do better. He actually inspired my art journey. You know, he he saw something good in my heart and that I wanted to help the world make a better place. So. He encouraged me to, no matter what it is, express yourself, write down what you're doing, say what you're doing. And we really got into like philosophy. So we were reading a philosophy book or it might've even been the Bible and the word yet was in there. And, you know, he said, that's the company yet. Um, and after that, you know, with all the things that we talked about, helping make the world a better place, you know, not following the same narrative that everybody else follows, realizing that there's all the tools and the resources in this world to make your dreams come true and helping people to realize that. You don't have to do this cookie cutter life in order to be successful. You can use your passions and gifts to find success and happiness. Um, and we, when expounding on the word yet, it can it can mean two things. It can mean a however, you know, I'm, I went through 10 years of drug addiction yet, and I was able to overcome that. Don't put off till tomorrow what you can do today. So don't put off or make excuses on why you, you're not good enough, why you can't do this. You don't have the resources because you do. And you know, everybody has greatness inside of them. So with that, our motto is be great now. This year, I'm really trying to focus on actually building the brand. You know, um, I would give away clothing to everybody if I could, but I don't think I could do much if I don't actually yeah. start to build the business. So I'm trying to set the foundation, get an online store and just promote the message through, you know, Instagram, social media, just really get our name out there. And you said like some of the, like it was in the Bible, like that's like the, that was like the spur of the moment. Yeah, I, I believe it was either the Bible or in a book called The Mansions of Philosophy. The Mansions of Philosophy, wow. Yeah, The Mansions of Philosophy is just crazy. Like honestly, when reading that stuff and dig, digging into philosophy, I, it's like they talked about a hundred years ago, what is going on today. And that's it's also part of what me and Peter talked about is like, if you want to make any difference in the world, you really have to be thinking a hundred years in the future because it takes time. Um, so, so, yeah. so I'm hoping that my impact will happen long after I'm gone. So, I don't know if there's a specific technique or what I do to keep going, but honestly, like, you know, my faith in my higher power and, and my belief that 
you know, God has put this on my heart for a reason and I'm doing it for something bigger than myself, you know, so it's not, I do get joy out of doing art and I, I see the mindfulness and happiness and the expression that I get to do with it. But just knowing that the gifts that I've been given and the vision, like to be there and to inspire people and to help them and just again, help the world as, as cliche as that is, but to make the world a better place, that really pushes me past um, any uncomfortability or unwillingness to, to just not be afraid. <clears throat> yeah, there's so much, there's so much abundance in life out there. Like when you you push past that fear, and honestly, that's what you know. My brand's about global consilience is about giving people a platform to really like give them a voice, give them some expression. You know, if they have something that they want to talk about or something that they want to like perform, that's what that's for. Because um, that's what I do. Uh, our our uh, our slogan pretty much is gathering what we know to help someone else and that's part of the premise of this this interview series is gathering what people know so that way you know somebody can come across it and it can actually help them you know in the future or help give them some like ta tactical strategies or some you know whole, wholesome people to like look like look at to push them past their you know inhibitions or any, or, or any writer's block or anything that's preventing them from doing what they want to do uh i'm super excited for this show man the gc experience november 12th mercury cafe uh you're gonna have five easel stands there man and i can't wait to see what you bring uh, i can't wait to hear you talk about your brand you know for the details so people can actually hear it uh i, I thank you for your time man I, I thank you for who you are as a human being um i thank god for us you know coming in contact it truly is a blessing um, that we've crossed paths and you know I wish you continued success and um, you know that's pretty much all I have is there anything that you want to kind of say to kind of give us a little bit of an outro or oh, just um, you know thank you for taking the time it's definitely meaningful um, it's been a long journey for the past six seven years just trying to take little steps here and there getting knocked off course in life but I'm, I'm really trying to set a good foundation and actually do this thing so just having the support of like-minded people is it was really a blessing and yeah, I look forward to the show on November 12th. Awesome man, I look forward to seeing you there, man. Yeah. Thank you.